Rastafari. It's good to be here. You see. See one flock you know. Try reason for some things. Important. Early Jamaica history. We are talking about this time. And with a fake Rastafari development. In 1655. Britain colonial government. Had a problem. Want to conquer land. Not really had a problem. But they want to conquer more land. So they seized Jamaica from the Spanish. In that time. And even before even that time, the Arabs were in Jamaica and they made a sad demise. The same Arab Indians that we read about or some of us read about and you can't even trace them in this time anymore because there's not recorded history of them. You know, in Jamaica we find some artifacts of some bones and some cook cook uh we call now pots and pans and you can say anthropologists or archaeologists will say they belong to the Arawak set of people. So we know that Jamaica, they, they had named Jamaica Examica. So at least we carry the Arawak name even today. 16th to 18th century, British shipped millions of Africans across the Atlantic. This is known as transatlantic slave of Africans. They brought the Africans to their slave plantations to plant sugar cane. It was a tough time because let's look at slavery. Try and stretch your imagination of what slavery is and a slavery given those who suffered. And this time when we are fortunate, some of us, because some of us are still being enslaved. So they talk about mental slavery, but physical slavery. That's where it is, especially chattel slavery. So we even give thanks to those who survive, our ancestors who survive, that we can come about in this time and speak in their memory. I'll try to learn what went on to stretch our imagination. With slave plantation in Jamaica was tough. Many rebellions could slave them. No man don't want to be enslaved, you know. Think of it, you know. No man don't want to be enslaved. So eighteen to the eighteenth to the nineteenth century. English come here. With Africans in slave ship. The Taki Rebellion in 1831 to 1832 was a terrible thing. You know, Taki come from slave ship, and you know about Taki and Nani and Kwako. And Taki was a rebellious one. And lead a slave rebellion. I think it's a hundred year rebellion, Taki led, you know. Because more like a guerrilla war and sabotage, you know. And you know, rebellion go, burning up places and all them things. Following by that, you have, you call it Baptist Rebellion. Or we know as the Sam Sharp Rebellion. Because Sam Sharp was a Baptist. Yeah. We see if one of Sharp says his name Samuel Sharp. So he organized a Christmas Day Rebellion. And that was very rough because Sam Sharp is a man who could have read and write. So, my favorite, and was a preacher. The church played an important part in slavery, see, especially the Baptist church, who did not preach, who are, who did not preach a, a traditional Christian doctrine, but a doctrine of survival and what things should be instead of heaven and hell doctrine that one man preach more today. They preach of a, a doctrine of humanity and how you feel live as compared to what people are preach, baptized and go to heaven, you know. Because them time they look on 
serious things in life and compare to how the Bible that says every man born equal. So that's what he said. So Sam Sharp was a man. We'll ride him donkey and get night and we'll talk to his slaves then. Show them, say. Things are right to end the seat. To the younger ones, them, stronger ones, them, decide, say. Now I'm going to be passive like a daddy shop, we just speak. Them decide to just burn some plantation and burn down some great dogs and all them things, they so that will happen. Is it? Yeah, but. Jamaica have a whole heap of slaves in there. 300,000 slaves. Jamaica have them time. So for the 300,000 slaves, 60,000 of them decide to revolt. It wasn't a nice thing. You know, look at those pure fire they burn all over the place. So the slave master would force to come to grips with the situation and realizing that so everything now go work in Jamaica for much longer. Although he love the sugar and he make big money and that cost him more to maintain a sugar plantation. You know, most of him love loved ones them are perish. So that's so it said when the masses rise up and decide say, hey, we are human beings just like you, you know. But we have equal share of things. So the British decide to abolish the part of slavery. But him still want to make money. Because the man decides to say, feel place. I'm only people and I'm only living property, you know. So every time when indentured workers was introduced in Jamaica after everything pacify and I'm going to get cold myself. You know, see it. So I'm about time of indentureship. Mm-hmm. So you have the Indians them come here yeah, from India. You have the Chinese man them come see him here. But they want to get some work done. The black man them see him here, Jamaica, up on a different level. So you get feeling in plot of land. And you could have farm and you look at place see him here. You have a rough bucket master and a more of rough himself. Put him up a rough bucket master. On a level, coffee and wages still can't work. But the Indian come in a status and come to earn a fortune. You see, they're not coming on slave ship and all them things and chain up and abuse. But the Indians came and they came in a religion, they came in Hinduism. The Sadhus came too, among them. Dreadlock Sadhus came and come with his own lifestyle. Priest came. Yeah. And we like Jamaica because it was better than India to the circumstance I got you same way. But the Sadhus were some Indians who renounce the society to remove themselves. In come with the good ganja that we know. In come with them chill on pipe. In come with them food. You know, the things they want to love to eat. You know, that gang could have find them in Jamaica. See it. All them things there. Eh? So, I want different level now. Africa start see some different men are come. Different level of thinking, different looks, different ways of life. On a spiritual level. And him will come into reasoning with himself after him done work. And don't do him at all. Could have light up him chalice. And smoke some ganja. He could have make some ganja tea. Could have some reasoning. So in a spiritual lights. What him do to? You give the Africans them some of the ganja for smoke. <laughs> that was Irie. He got the ganja tea and give them. You see it? And he loved that. So it's like a big yard. The Jamaicans them and the Indians them. 
It's a nice thing, especially on weekend. You see? So, it was Irie that was introduced in Jamaica. And many ones start to mention and say, yeah, it's good to be among the Indians and to learn from them. You see? Yeah, man, the same chill out, we are born on Kochi. Indians them carry that. Yeah. And then carry the ganja seed them with them and implant it. And the ganja farms them, they may have their seed. Yeah, man. So then the first stage of influence on Rastafari. When you look at the Indians, they must see the rest. Because the Sadhus them have some long locks, you know, long locks, man, them. Man, them move the sight on. You know, you know, hold up a clothes. You know, go shorts. You know, go sandals, you can feel like. You can try to be a foot. You know, they have him bash. You know, things. You know, they have him fold. You know, even in our meds. You know, we ain't too like society, because you know, the man will just shod. I love him herb. Him tried. See? Yeah. So, you find say, he's a spiritual person too. And him read him Bible and him read him, him historical books. And he speak about Kali, the Ganja goddess. Ganja smoking goddess. So we have Kali Herb. The band come here, man, in my tradition as youth. I'm going to buy herb and say, send me a jar of Kali. I don't know good jar of Kali Herb. Yeah. So we don't know so the name Kali come from the Hindu. This is where it come from. So the Rasta man, see him here. In the Judo Christian man see me can use the Bible. So I use the Bible as a reference. But you see him, we get him spirituality. I'm gonna use the ganja or the Indian brain. I'm gonna use the Aital, the liberty and the, the no salt. That when it comes to the Indian I use. Because I'm saying, I'm going to escape. You know, I'm going to think. I'm going to space where I'm going to have say, someone if you associate with a different level and plantation owner. Oh, I'm fine. A joy with being with the Indians, you see it. So, as far embodied a radical, revolutionary, and political approach to create positive changes in society. We have a man like Leonard Howell now who come up. In an journey there. I will do a wise man. I will have an Indian friend named Lalo. Yeah, man, Lalo is a sad same way, you know, Lalo. He's a spiritual man. And with this Hinduism that was there and this Indian Hindu culture and ways of life. It was Lalu who named Hoel Gangunguru Maraj. Because we never know about those names, I never know where it come from, I never know the meaning of it. He couldn't call himself so. And he had reasons to call himself so. So Lalu was like a teacher for Hoel. Yeah. So. Gangunguru Maharaj or Gang Maharaj or, or tough king or tough gang, the same thing. You see? So Lalu also teach how he sings prayers, Hindu prayers, taught him the language to, to a certain extent, so he could speak, go to Hindi, see him and know he go. But we will never grow no locks. So the part they never had that. But they might have the name. 
and the ways and the thinking. You see? Yeah. And the self-reliance. And the separation from society. Because that is what I was bringing. To separate yourself from society. Form your own community. And build your own energy. You know, see, so you separate yourself from a mainstream. In you know, your community. You can't find a way out. So early Rastafari. Like, more like a holy first Rasta. But we come see. But we come know. The Indians they move came, especially the Sadhus, which is the Lalo. Oh, it's a pity we don't know more about him. Because he not, not many things are documented, but the very little that we know. He had a great influence on Leonard Howell. You see? So the Indians, Sadhu, seek to transcend the ordinary life. To pursue a mystic connection with the divine. You see, how, you see how the man them set themselves. Just like Rastafari, who seek to transcend the Babylon system, we call Babylon system, to pursue a mystic, mystical connection with your Rastafari. Because the human Rastafari, the objective, you know, is to be one with Ayala Silasia. You leave Babylon and come. You burn down Babylon. And you want to go to Zion. You want to be an Irish Easter lion. Yeah. Just like the Hindu them. Just like the Sadhus them. Denounce what they go on down here. And look on the heights. Of holiness and of heights within the heights. Because so it said. So you find that there's an intertwining between the Sadhus, the Indians. Because the Africans never bring no ganja come here, you know. They're not slave ship, you know. They don't carry no ganja seed, you know. They come through suffrage and brutality and chains. Because the history show. The traditional life of Rastafari came from an Indian influence. And he will come out of oil himself to reach the level of two. Or he come see in a community. You see, I give thanks to that. Yeah. There's a lot of similarity with Rastafari. An Indian tradition and Indian influence. So Rastafari have separated themselves from mainstream society. The Sadhus did the same. You see, the Sadhus grow lax and born comb and scissors. Rastafari did the same. Sadhus use ganja as a sacrament. Same thing Rasta say. Ganja is sacrament. Sadhus born like a hot rod. Chill on pipe. Bust a buckle and put the ganja in it and smoke that. Buckle neck. Yeah. Both do the same thing. So those plant ganja, having ganja plantation, plant it. He repeat him, say ganja is medicine. Rasta did the same thing too. You see, a whole similarity. So those are Aitan man. Not a flesh eater. Rasta did the same thing too. Let him learn. But in practice, so there's a great connection between both and both intertwine. 
was so early as Rasta child, but as an influence of the journey of how things come about. Because if you look seriously on things now, yeah. Jamaica is a slave plantation, slavery there. And the indentured workers who come, they come with a culture. And it's a refreshing culture to the Africans then, who are there. And they need something to relax them too. You see, you see, you can't separate the Rasta, you know, without his, from his spirituality, you know. Because his spirituality make him. He's going calm himself and set himself. So he finds a comfort within himself of being among the Sadhus, Indians, and Mukim. Because there's similarity in religion, you know. Which is what you look for and what you adapt from it and take it to be your own self. So it's always good to see where the culture comes from. What are the similarities with the culture? What's the man with the Bible? Yet someone born the Bible. And you should then read Revelation. And chant the Psalms then. That we come here, that we come see. And Bible is a point of reference for many. And Bible can be used in many ways. Just like with the history of people, is a point of reference to that we adapt. And you can say, yeah, that's a starting point. Because the journey of people, you know. And people are just people who adapt other people's ways and the good ways and take from it and refine it. Because sections of what the Sadhus tradition we take as Rasta, we never take all of it. We never need all of it. We only need what we need to survive on. Because the Sadhus didn't see the divinity of Ayala Selassie. We see that. Indians of all the gods within Hinduism. We use the liberty that we come, but they introduce and which are eyes within ourselves. It's a stepping stone to where we are there. And you have to give credit for that. Yeah, I know. So it's good to read. I'm good to study. I'm good to see the journey of how things come up. The upper Indians in Jamaica still, you know. They come with them food and their culture and them dal and the roti and yeah, you know, Jamaicans love that. Still own Sablaman. Of place in Jamaica, yes, it's Indians, them day and we give thanks to them. Still up on the cane field, see me, cane belt there, and within the country, I see them up and down. And that gen a new generation of them. So, anything you have good and bad, you know, people who come to Jamaica. And them set up themselves as different generations. But in the journey of life, we the Africans still stand up. And we come here. Our ancestors come here, we not even know religion then come in. But Africans being spiritual people have to find our own ground. Our own spirituality. Now in that sp spirituality that we have seen and that we have become. We say Rastafari. And use Ganja as a medium to reach our heights. So we give thanks 
for the Indians who came. Who oh, bring the good Kali weed. You know. Yeah. Now we give thanks. To him could have bring high and liberty. In a journey of separation. On a journey to which divine. That ones could have seen. Who, who stood among them. Who could have learned. And how well could I see and adapt to become the first Rasta? Gang Gungoro Mirage. Even Bob Marley had the name Tough Gang. So you know, say, many things to learn in this time. Ja, Rastafari. Give thanks and pray.